Hey guys, it's e Mike here. Today we're going to talk about AWS DevOps Professional Exam. This is a very rewarding, valuable, at the same time tough to pass. So I'm going to divide this video into two sections. In the first part, I'm going to talk about DevOps in general, the culture, the mindset, and why we need it. In the second part, I'm going to talk about the exam detail uh, from time, cost, and all the topics. So without further ado, let's get started. So DevOps in general, it's a combination of developers and the operation team, right? Uh, when I started programming, the approach was a developer builds the application and gives it to operation team, system administrators, and they're going to take care of the application and run it for the production environment. So this was a basically a you are on that team, I'm in this team. Now it becomes your problem. Here's my code, right? This culture doesn't work anymore. And companies realize that they need to help developers and operation team work well together in order to make the company more successful and competitive. So time to market, it's a very important factor in software development practices, right? So if it takes you like six months to develop a feature, it's going to be too late. Your competitors are you know, moving fast and you wanna stay competitive, right? So what do we do? We learn about DevOps. Although DevOps is very, very popular these days, I know companies that they don't practice DevOps, like Netflix. I was watching a video and they were talking about that we don't do DevOps. We, you build it, you run it. So it becomes your problem, right? So, um, you know, on the other hand, you have a lot of companies that they do have a DevOps person in the team who helps the team, you know, to develop and automate the entire, you know, um, software delivery process for the team and make everything more uh, resilient in terms of, you know, testing and shipping the code to production. So DevOps is a mindset, right? It's a cultural philosophies plus tools and basically practices that help companies to develop features at high velocity, right? So uh, you wanna stay competitive, you need to develop your features faster and ship them to production. So many years ago, developers could just, you know, have uh, development knowledge and start building applications, right? Without being worried about other things. But these days, if you want to stay competitive in job market and, you know, helping your uh, companies, you know, run faster and be more successful, you need to become familiar with all these challenges that system administrators face on a daily basis in order to run and scale and, and basically serve your application to the final user. How do they scale the application? How many servers do we require? How do we basically patch the operating system? How do we stay up, uh, let's say 99.99 uh, SLA contract? So availability, scaling, infrastructure, these are the things that are really challenging. And as a developer, again, um, you need to stay competitive and advance your knowledge and DevOps is, the, is one of, uh, you know, basically uh, tools that you can can use in order to become successful in your career. So we talked about time to market and automation as opposed to having two separate team, uh, you know, and one, someone, uh, one person just, you know, builds the code and uh, the other person, you know, uh, administers the system. So we're going to combine both teams, uh, work well together in order to deliver the software faster and more reliable. So in the second section, I want to talk about the exam details. So the exam has 75 questions. It's 190 minutes. You can request 30 minutes extra if you're, uh, if you're not a native speaker or somehow, you know, having trouble with the language. So you can get 220 minutes for the DevOps Pro exam. The exam, uh, also, of course, they have on-site, but recently due to this COVID-19, last week, AWS and Pearson View, they launched an online proctored exam program which I took yesterday uh, on Saturday and I was able to pass my new version AWS DevOps engineer and I'm going to share all the details that I know about the exam and how to prepare for it. So the exam cost is $300 but you can use benefits in, in your account if you've passed like certifications and associate level you will get 50% discount so you will find it in your account. But uh, let me briefly, before uh, going over all the topics that you need uh, to study for the exam, about a very important concept. A lot of people, when they pass their uh, you know, associate level certification, they immediately schedule their pro level because they feel like, okay, I know everything about AWS, and I'm going to pass my uh, certification in, in DevOps or in Solutions Architect Professional. It just doesn't work that way, right? Don't waste your money and time. Um, 
AWS designed these, uh, you know, certifications in a way to make sure whoever is achieving that pro level certification has enough experience and expertise in the field. So it just doesn't work that way. It's no joke. This exam is hard, right? So I definitely recommend you guys, uh, if you haven't, you know, started on AWS, please pause this video. You need to go back and start with AWS. Uh, associate level, maybe solutions architect, developer, or sysop admin. You at least need one of these certifications in order to pass your DevOps. I definitely recommend first you pass all the three certifications, then go to the next level because you want to make sure you understand the field. You are a, you want to be a pro level, uh, you know, engineer. You just don't want to hold a certification after, let's say, putting 30 hours. Let's say you get lucky and pass the exam, but you're not actually that good in that level, right? which is not going to happen. Uh, AWS definitely make sure that you have enough knowledge in order to pass these type of exams. So uh, you need to put effort, reading, reading, practicing, hands-on a lot in order to pass this exam. So let's get started and talk about all the topics that you need to be really comfortable during this exam. One, CICD, the entire process of continuous integration, continuous deployment, and continuous delivery. You need to be really comfortable with all these three concepts. Services like code commit, right? Like code repository, uh, code uh, build, how to build a code, uh, code pipeline, right? How to build a pipeline, code deploy, how to deploy to different servers. You need to make sure you're comfortable building an actual uh, you know, CICD pipeline. Uh, I have a video in CICD pipeline, application deployment, code commit, please go watch those. These uh, will give you enough experience if you follow them step by step and practice them will help you understand this process easier. So CICD pipeline is, is a big part of the exam and it's a big part of any DevOps engineer in order to automate the testing process of the software and delivering to production environment. Uh, definitely you want to make sure you are familiar with deployment strategies, deployment strategies, let's say blue green deployment, right? Where you have two set of different, uh, servers, you are paying more for the service, but you want to be reliable. Your blue environment is running and serving traffic to your users and your green environment is being deployed and you can test it. And then you can shift traffic from blue to green until hundred of the uh, percent of the traffic goes to the green environment. And you, then you dispose of the blue environment. So blue green deployment deployment is very, very reliable way of deploying an application. But of course there's a cost to it. At the same time, you have in place deployment where you update the application on an existing server that will cost some downtime but it's cheap. So these are the trade-offs that you need to be really, really comfortable with to make decision under two minutes, under three minutes while you're in an exam. So uh, the next step is auto scaling group. Auto scaling group is probably one of the most important part of DevOps job. And of course, DevOps certification. Uh, you want to make sure you know how to scale an application uh, based on traffic. You need to know how to scale uh, the application based on the queue size. You need to make sure you are very familiar with termination policy, how the, uh, how uh, every single you know option uh, reacts to the environment. Like let's say uh, when you have a termination policy of old configuration, auto scaling group will start terminating instances that I have uh, the old configuration. So make sure you know all these, how to suspend the process. Let's say you want to troubleshoot something. How do you, you know, suspend the process in auto scaling group, a launch configuration and launch templates. These are the things that uh, basically auto scaling group will look uh, for a pattern in order to launch more servers or uh, bring that elasticity scaling out and in for any cloud platform solution. So in the past, these were all, you know, challenging ordering servers, patching servers, updating the underlying system, but AWS and public cloud, any other uh, vendor as well, they make it easy for developers and operation and companies to, you know, build these uh, features faster than ever and go to uh, market globally. So we talked about auto scaling group. We talked about CI CD practices. The next one is CloudWatch. I cannot emphasize CloudWatch enough. Everything evolves around CloudWatch. CloudWatch is the most important part of DevOps engineer, right? Because CloudWatch is a monitoring center, right? It's a device that basically monitors every single piece of your cloud information and it can react based on CloudWatch ev uh, events. Remember, CloudWatch events can trigger, can react to every single piece of your cloud infrastructure. Let's say you start a pipeline, you start an application, you do something, CloudWatch can detect 
and start another process. Let's say a developer submits a code to code pipeline to, uh, and then from the pipeline, you want to trigger a Lambda function that goes in, runs some ch uh, security uh, checks on the application to make sure there's no secret code or password exposed to your uh, repository. It's a very, very important uh, a service and it features a lot in the exam. So a lot of questions around CloudWatch and CloudWatch events. Make sure you have a hands-on experience, go practice CloudWatch, create alarms, do auto scaling based on CloudWatch alarms, right? Uh, so again, I cannot emphasize CloudWatch enough. The next one is cloud formation and concept of infrastructure as code. Uh, infrastructure as code, it's a very important concept where you have a configuration, when you have a JSON file or YAML file that can launch uh, a real you know, hardware off of that blueprint. It's just amazing. Technologies like Terraform will work with multi-cloud uh, platforms, right? But cloud formation is native to AWS and you can basically start coding your infrastructure and you can spin up servers, you can create firewalls and everything uh, off of that uh, file, basically. In cloud formation, you need to know the lifecycle hooks, you need to know how to update uh, the cloud formation, uh, you need to understand the how to roll back, how the errors work in cloud formation, and a bunch of other things like nested, uh, you know, cloud formation stacks. So cloud formation, again, it's a great concept in general, but it features a lot, again, in uh, DevOps Pro and also Solutions Architect Pro. So containers, uh, I have a video on ECR and container, ECR and containers uh, features a lot. Uh, you can watch that. I promise if you watch that video, you can uh, definitely answer all the questions relate, uh, related to container service and ECR and ECS. So uh, basically creating a cluster, how to create a service, how to create a task, how to scale your microservices because microservices, you know, they're very common these days. All the companies are trying to build their applications around microservices. I do have another videos on microservices, which I definitely recommend. It will help you. Uh, you know, in the exam. Uh, I want to talk about a few more things. Um, API Gateway and Lambda. Lambda, you know, it's uh, basically uh, you run your code without provisioning any server. And But you have to remember that uh, Lambda can only run the task for 15 minutes. If uh, your, your application takes or your batch processing job takes more than uh, 15 minutes, of course, Lambda is not the answer. But you can develop Lambda in Node.js and Python in uh, different languages in AWS and can communicate to many, many uh, basically servers. But definitely make sure you know how to deploy your code to Lambda, right? We have canary deployment, we have linear deployment, and type of different versioning and aliases in Lambda. These are very, very important points for the exam. So ops work, another service. Ops works is basically chef, uses chef recipes, is a configuration management where you create a stack and then you create different layers. Let's say you have a uh, you know stack and this is a, let's say, an invoice processing application and inside that you have different layer, right? Let's say you have three layers, web app, uh, database, and load balancing, uh, you know, different layers in your stack. So, and inside every single layer, you will, you can create, for example, instances and deploy your app to this instance. But of course, there are lifecycle hooks, like uh, when the application starts, when, they, when it ends, when it configures. So you can basically pause the creation process and run some script, right? Let's say in auto scaling group, in lifecycle hooks, uh, Let's say you spin up a new server using auto scaling group and immediately when it becomes active after, let's say, passing your health check, it will join the load balancer, but it's not actually ready to serve traffic. Why? Because it takes 20 minutes, 10 minutes to actually configure all the pieces for your application to make it work. So uh, how do we make sure the application doesn't go live until it's ready? We use lifecycle hooks, right? Uh, when we start the application, before actually going to the service, we can pause the app, uh, you know, auto scaling, we can pause the instance uh, moving forward, and then we can do some setup, we can install a script, we can download code, configure, and when it's done, we can actually let the server uh, go to, uh, you know, join the 
the rest of the servers. So these are the things like cycle hooks, you wanna make sure you understand deeply why life, life cycle hooks are needed because you will uh, get a lot of uh, question regarding life cycle hooks and you know the, the application, uh, everything looks good, it joined the load balancing, all, it passes all the health checks, but it's not serving traffic. The reason is the application is just not ready. The solution would be you know using life cycle hooks to have more time in order to configure your server properly. Uh, Elastic Beanstalk, of course, it's a basically platform where you can deploy your application. Let's say you build a website, you want to go live tomorrow, you want to build a prototype, Beanstalk will be your answer. It's easy to manage, it's automatically provisions all the servers, everything required to run your application. Let's say you have a Spring Boot application, you can deploy it to Beanstalk, you can scale it, uh, you can have configuration, and uh, load balancing everything in your Elastic Beanstalk environment. You can do blue-green deployment in AWS Beanstalk. I do have a video that I, where I deploy AWS Beanstalk and Java application, and you can watch that. I promise that will definitely help you in the exam. So in general, everything that's basically automating the entire process of software delivery will be a DevOps team's job. Right. Uh, you want to understand that you're comfortable with this culture, right? Uh, even when you want to uh, join a new company, when you want to uh, learn about new technology, you always, as a developer, uh, want to think about, you know, all the uh, problems and all the challenges that you need to address in order to, you know, deliver a successful uh, software product. So the entire process of moving the uh, the software pieces to production uh, is basically called DevOps, uh, which is a, a combination of developers and operation teams. So you need to understand how to provision infrastructure, what it takes to run your code under pressure, how to scale it, how to deal with disasters, and all the things that's required for application. So uh, that's all I had. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I want to hear back from you. And um, I hope you guys pass this exam and you guys put the time and energy in, in this field. And the reason is cloud is, again, is going to be, uh, you know, future. DevOps is your future as a developer. Uh, and you want to make sure you have the competitive edge, you know, between all the programmers. So I hope you guys like this video. Subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.